of the Hundred Dollar MBA Show, the place you tune in to get real business lessons you can actually use with our daily ten-minute business lessons for the real world. I'm your host, your coach, your teacher, Omar Zenholm. I'm also the co-founder of the Hundred Dollar MBA, a complete business training and community online. And in today's episode, you will learn: Does every dollar count in business? Many of us as entrepreneurs, we're counting every cent. We're looking at refunds. We're looking at how much we should price our product. Should I go 95? Should I go 85? What about 87? We look at our expenses. We take hours to choose a platform because we want to know if we want to save $10 or $20 a month. We think and think and overthink how much we should pay our employees. We're wondering if we're paying too much for a payment processor. These are things that occupy a lot of entrepreneurs' minds. And in today's episode, I want to discuss. I want to share with you and answer the question: Does every dollar in business count? Is it worth your time to actually look and compare and save a few dollars here or there? Does it make a difference if it's a one-time savings or a recurring savings, or is the whole thing a waste of your time and you should be focusing on something else? I know that this is a pain point for many of you listening. I know it was for me for a very long time. And in many ways, it still is in some degree. So I'm going to share with you my strategy. I'm going to share with you a way for you to know how to deal with this and know if every dollar counts in business. So let's get into it, guys. Let's get down to business. Today's episode of the Hundred Dollar MBA Show is sponsored by Queensboro.com. For over 33 years, savvy entrepreneurs have trusted Queensboro.com for custom logo apparel. And guess what, hundred dollar MBA listeners? If you go to queensboro.com slash MBA, you'll receive thirty percent off your first order. Plus, you'll get a free logo setup, free shipping, and it's all guaranteed. Whether you're ordering custom T-shirts, caps, bags, they guarantee a great quality, a great fit, and guarantee the whole order is perfect. And it's all backed by stellar customer service. So go to queensboro.com slash MBA and receive thirty percent off. All right, guys. Let's get into this. Does every dollar count? Now, there are different angles or different aspects we want to talk about when we answer this question. One, there's expenses. Does every dollar count when we actually have to pay for something? Whether that's a new software we need to use, paying salaries, or even giving out refunds. These are expenses. And then we have revenue, right? We have how much we actually charge for our products, how much we charge for our services. So I have a very clean and very simple approach to this. When it comes to your expenses, yes, you do need to have a lean approach. Do not buy something. Do not use something if you don't need it. This is especially important if it's a reoccurring charge. If it's a one-time fee, like a course, let's say for example, you buy a podcasting course and you have the intention of starting a podcast in the next few months, then maybe that's a good choice because it's a one-time fee. It's an investment. You're going to use it. But if it's a reoccurring charge, let's say like a service like video hosting, and you haven't created any videos to host yet, then you really should be buying that. You shouldn't be paying for hosting every single month for videos you are not hosting. So that's pretty clean cut. Now, when it comes to actually purchasing something, whether it's reoccurring or one time, I don't think it's a really great idea to constantly nickel and dime yourself. If you're going to buy a service for a particular reason, whether it's let's say for example webinar software or a hosting provider. Choose something that's within your budget, but more importantly, choose something that is good. Something that actually will deliver, has great service. There's nothing worse than buying the cheapest thing out there, and then realizing, oh my gosh, I just wasted my money because it doesn't really do what I needed to do, or it doesn't help me in the way I needed to help me, or I can't get the customer service to help me out and get me set up. So don't overthink things. Just find something within your budget and focus on the best solution in that range. Now I'm going to be completely honest with you. The simple solution to all this nickel and diming and wondering if every dollar counts is to simply make more money. When it comes to revenue, if you make more money, if you bring more money into your business, this becomes less of a problem. And if you've ever been in that position where you're starting to make money, you'll understand you're not worrying about this anymore. I know this is more of a concern for people just getting started, but this can become a habit. So my advice is focus on revenue, focus on sales. Instead of trying to trim the fat constantly, sometimes there's nothing left to trim. Focus on bringing in more money into your business, marketing, creating new customers. Even if that means going one-on-one with different customers, that means reaching out to individuals on social media. 
doing more workshops, live events, doing more webinars. We talk about webinars all the time here on Learner All Bay because they really work. They help you get more sales better than anything I've seen online. And as a side note, if you want to get started, we have a free course on that too. Just go to webinarninja.co slash plan. That's a free seven-day course, and it'll show you how to get started with webinars. But the point here is, is that as a business owner, your job is to make money, to make profit. A lot of us, we forget about that. You create this great product, create this great service. Your job is to get it into the hands of people. You should be marketing and selling. Sales should be a big part of your regular activity in business whether that's podcasting, creating a blog post, videos, doing webinars again. The point here is, is that you gotta go on the offense. And when you have revenue coming in, regular revenue, regular sales coming in, you can then test price point. You can increase your prices by 5%, 10%, see how it affects sales, see how it affects overall revenue. You may make less number of sales, but your total revenue might be more at that price point. Now, when it comes to setting your prices, the question, does every dollar count, is a little bit more relevant, especially if you have reoccurring charges. So say, for example, you have a membership site of a whole bunch of courses that you have in your area of expertise. The difference between charging $25 and $35 and $45 a month is huge when it comes to your customer base. Let's do some quick math here. So say, for example, you have 300 monthly subscribers to your community. Now, 300 is not a lot. You can get to 300 within six months or so with minimal marketing. Think about that, 300 customers. That's 50 customers, 50 new customers every month over a six-month period. That's very doable. So if you charge $25 a month for 300 monthly subscribers, that's 7,500 in monthly sales. That's pretty cool, right? I know some of you are surprised. Wow, $25 a month for 300, that's the total? Yeah, that's the math. So say, for example, you choose a different price point. Instead of $25 a month, you go $35 a month. Now, from the user end, it's not a huge difference, $25 or $35. But for you, your monthly revenue goes from $7,500 to $10,500, $3,000 more every single month. So you could see how a slight price pivot on a monthly subscription can make some serious, serious difference. Let's go a little deeper. Let's say, for example, your price point is $35 versus $25 a month and you only have 250 monthly subscribers less, 50 subscribers less than the 300. You're still making more money. You're making $8,750 in monthly sales. So even with less customers, 50, that's a reasonable number of customers, you're still making more money. Yes, every dollar kind of counts when it comes to pricing, especially for reoccurring customers, reoccurring charges. Guys, I got more on today's topic, but before that, I gotta give love to today's sponsor, Creative Live. Guys, I wanna tell you about the creative pioneers over at Creative Live. Creative Live helps people unlock their creative potential. Their online knowledge bank is a great place to rekindle your artistic spark or dig into new skills like photography, design, crafting, music production, and business savvy. You can watch classes in their massive online catalog or come attend live. I've done it a few times myself. You can learn from the best experts like Tim Ferriss, Alex Bloomberg, and Ann Giddies. They'll show you how to bring your A game to whatever revs your engine. Just go to creativelive.com slash MBA and you'll get 20% off any of Creative Live's classes. So go ahead, thrill yourself, join a vibrant community of creators today at creativelive.com slash MBA. All right, guys, I wanna wrap up this lesson into a solid game plan. When it comes to expenses, find out the tools that you need and what you're gonna be using immediately. Find the best tools within your budget and go for it. Don't think about it too much. Don't dwell on it. Most of these products have great return policies, 30 day, 60 day money back guarantees. So you can try them out and if they are not right for you, you can change them up. Don't spend so much time dwelling on a few bucks here or there. But when it comes to revenue, focus on getting more sales. Make it your mission every single day to get new customers. Whether they're joining your mailing list or your free course so they can eventually become customers, or actually making a sale live, in person, or on a webinar. But don't let it waste so much time. Dedicate some time to make some choices. So if you're saying, hey, I wanna choose a new um, course platform to host my courses on, I'm gonna spend two hours from this time to this time on this day to choose. And within the two hours, I will make a choice and make a purchase. So a lot of time and keep it locked. Don't go overboard and decide to make a choice when that time period is up. 
not only make a choice, but actually seal the deal and sign up for something. Do that for all your decisions when it comes to your expenses that need a little bit of comparison. It forces you to focus on production and not consumption. All right, guys, I hope that helps. I hope to see you in tomorrow's episode where we talk about when do you need to stop planning? When you start building a business, when you start launching a product, you're in that planning phase. Where's that point where we just stop planning and start doing? We talk about it in tomorrow's episode, so stay tuned for that. I'll see you then, guys. Take care. 